What we root our lives in determines our fruit. Jesus tells this parable. A good tree produces good fruit, a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit and a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. And if a, the tree does not produce good fruit, then it eventually gets cut down and thrown into the fire. So what is Jesus talking about? Well, it's a parable, so the trees represent people and the fruit represents the things they do. But it's said in a context of false prophets, in the Matthew version anyway. So what's a false prophet? Well, I think a false prophet really is anybody that comes across as godly, but instead of bringing people towards God, leads them away from God. And there were certainly plenty of people around at the time of Jesus, including the religious leaders, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, that were supposed to be leading people towards God, but basically most of the peasant peoples and that, they made life so difficult, they pushed them away from God. But they even accused Jesus of being false. In the words of Donald Trump, you are false news, <laughs> they said to him. And he said, look, you might not like what I say, but look at my works, look at my fruit, look at all the people coming back to God, and look at the miracles that I'm doing. You may not like it when I say to this paralysed man, your sins are forgiven. But so you know that what I say is true, I also say to him, get up and walk. And he gets up and walks. Now, what about us in our context? I think we've got to take note of what Jesus is saying, because if we go to church and say we're Christians, the people are looking at us, aren't they? And they're going to make a judgment about Jesus or God, depending on what they see in us. And how often do you hear people say, oh, I don't go to church because I knew these Christians once and whoa, put me off. Or Christians are just hypocrites. They talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. So in one sense, we are like that in that people judge Jesus or judge God by what they see in us. And it's where we put our roots down that's important. Because where we root our lives determines our fruit. Has any of you got trees in your garden? Yeah. Okay, do you know where the trees came from? I've got two trees in my back garden. And I know exactly where they came from, okay? When I was in my old house, I wanted to have a tree that produced good apples. So I went down to the nursery and I, I asked for an apple tree. And the man there, the expert, said, look, if you're going to plant an apple tree, you should also plant a crab apple tree near it because one will pollinate the other and you'll get much better fruit. You know, a little bit expensive, I thought, go on, I'll go for this. So I bought these two trees and I planted them in the bottom of my garden, the crab apple tree and the apple tree. And a few weeks later, I was looking out of the window and admiring my trees and this big fat cat jumped up into my apple tree and I saw it bend over and it snapped in half and he killed it. Now, a little bit later, we decided to move house to a place where there was just lawn. I thought, I think I'll take something to brighten it up. I'll take the crab apple tree with me. But I also noticed that in amongst the bushes on one side, there was a, a flowering cherry tree growing. It was quite tall, but it was spindly and it wasn't getting any light. I thought, it might die, but I'll move it across to my new house. It was too long to fit in the car, the cherry tree, so I carried it on my shoulder the mile across the village. And I planted the crab apple tree and the cherry tree near each other at the bottom of the garden. Yeah. That was 17 years ago. What do you think they look like now? Well, <laughs> I can't carry the cherry tree back to my old house because it's now 15 metres tall and it spans the whole garden. It's beautiful. Beautiful flowers, beautiful blossom. But the crab apple tree next to the cherry tree didn't do very well because the other tree grew so fast and expectedly it took all the nutrients out of the soil and also, its branches started pushing the other tree over. So I've got this little small crab apple tree that's leaning to one side and it's a bit stunted and doesn't look very good. Because it was all about where their roots were. If I'd left the crab apple tree in my old house, it would have done fine, even without the apple tree. But because I put it next to the fast growing cherry tree, crab apple tree suffered. It's where we root our lives determines our fruit. It's the same for me and you. So we're going to look at bad fruit and good fruit today. Where does bad come from? 
Right, look at the nearest person to you and ask this question, are they human? Of course they're, of course, of course they're human, of course you are. When you're born human, you're born with a human nature. And the human nature has got a bad side to it, doesn't it? And we make excuses for our human nature. You hear people say, oh, my neighbour, she's always gossiping. Wow, all of us women like to gossip. Or that young man's chasing more than one girl at a time. He's always doing that. You say, wow, that's just human nature. But Paul, when he talks to the Galatians, he's got some very strong words to say about it. He says, what human nature does is quite plain. It shows itself in immoral, filthy and indecent actions. People become enemies and they fight. They become angry, jealous and self-focused in their ambitions. They're envious, get drunk, have orgies and do all these sorts of things. Now, if you look at Paul's words and say that is human nature, then you would think, well, all of us, we spend all of our time getting drunk, watching pornos, fighting, going to orgies, and that's what we do. Which isn't true, is it? No. Because it's not just the bad side of the human nature, which we Paul calls the flesh, but there's a good side of the human nature because we were created in God's image, weren't we? So there's a good side and a bad side. But what it means is that with our human nature is that there's this conflict between good and bad. It's like in some of the adverts, you see like a little demon on one shoulder, a little angel on the other shoulder. And I'll give you an example. A few years ago I went to the doctor and she says to me, you've got high cholesterol, you're overweight, go on a diet, start tomorrow, no problem. What happens I get into work, and someone's birthday, and they bring in a load of chocolate cake, big slabs, right near my desk. As I walk past it, what's happening in my head? One voice is saying, you're on a diet, don't touch it. And the other voice is saying, go on, go on, go on, start your diet tomorrow. So we've got this conflict in our heads, haven't we? We've got these two voices. And the difficulty is, normally we can balance the good and the bad, but sometimes in life, the bad side just starts to spiral us down. When people give way to the, the bad side of their human nature, life can get worse and worse, and people become more evil. And we only have to look around the world to see some of the terrible things that have been doing, to see if that's true about the human nature. And I was watching a film last night called Room, and it was about a true story of a lady, young lady that was enticed by a man to look for his dog and ended up being in prison in his shed for seven years. And she, he got her pregnant and she grew up, and the boy was five years old by the time they escaped. And you can just see the evil in people because of the human nature. But the good news is that at Easter time, Jesus died on a cross uh, to save us from that. He gets his cross-shaped shovel and he transplants us out of the dark into the light. And Jesus said, I am the light. And we grow like my cherry tree towards the light and flourish. And it's a personal faith but it's not a private faith, it's a public faith, isn't it? We need to stand in that light so that we can draw other people into that light by the example that Jesus lives out through us. And when we're saved by Jesus, we are born again. Mm. Now, the first time we are born, we are born with a human nature. The second time we are born, spiritually, we get a spiritual nature. Now, there's good and bad in the human nature, but there is only good in the spiritual nature. And the good in the spiritual nature can help us overcome the bad in the human nature. That's the good news, is we live in the light. But the truth is we don't instantly look like Jesus when we become Christians. We are transplanted into the light, but there are still areas in our lives that aren't right, aren't there? And I think it's like us being rooted in the light, but we've got like trailing roots which go back into our past. They pick up on us, perhaps like some of our old habits, our old attitudes, and our old emotions that we've got still come into us. Another thing that we choose to do when we become Christians is, actually, I'll give you so much of my life, Jesus, but I want to keep this compartment to myself. It might be, perhaps, it's your career choices, or it might be your finances. So you can bring compartments, and those get rooted in the dark. So and that's where we are. We're living in the light, but we've got things trailing back into the dark. We need to be moving uh, these things across, don't we? So let's have a look at ourselves, look at but what perhaps bad looks like, and we can think, hmm, does that apply to me? So what does a bad habit look like? I suppose Paul's got some of these nailed, hasn't he? We can drink too much, we can be swearing, we can be 
are looking at pornography, we don't turn over the television when we should, or we press the link on the internet when we shouldn't be looking at certain yeah. sites and that. So, so it's that type of thing. We could be really so much into work habit that we don't have time for our families, or we could just be lazy, the opposite Amen. of that. We could be very miserable, just have bad attitudes towards people. We could perhaps be down on people all the time. We could be quick to be angry. We could not accept people for who they are, you know, these sort of bad attitudes. What about our self-image? Bad self-image, you could compare yourself to other people negatively, couldn't you? Right. And say, look, they are so much better than me and, and really be hard on yourself. Or mm -hmm. on the opposite, there's this, what we call the selfie image now, where you're so obsessed with your own image and you, want, you keep posting photos of yourself. And if you don't get as many likes as last time, you get upset. I want to just take a break before we go and look at the good side. And we're going to ask the Holy Spirit now just to put into our minds one area of our lives where we've got perhaps trailing roots that perhaps he wants to work on. Is that okay? You mustn't feel guilty about this because there's no guilt in Jesus. But this is just to help us move on in Jesus, okay? So let's do that. Holy Spirit, I just ask you right now to give me a thought of one area that I need to improve in my life. Where I can move that route across from darkness into light. Thank you, Jesus. Just confirming us that that's your word, Lord, and not ours. Okay. Okay, so has everyone got one area? One area, yeah? I say, Lord, I give you this area of my life. Thank you for revealing it to me. And I pray, Lord Jesus, you will help me surrender that area over to you. And give me the strength for your Holy Spirit to work on that area from this day on and bring it into your light. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Lord. So that's... The what bad looks like. So what did good look like? What about our good habits as a Christian? So spending time with Jesus, yeah? Listening to him and praying with him is a good habit. Reading your Bible, meeting with others, praising God and worshipping is a good habit, isn't it? Yes. If you're watching television and something comes up, turn over the channel, don't click on that link. Get in a habit of keeping your minds protected from things that are wrong. Also, where you deal with other people. Yeah, don't be prejudiced against people. Just accept them for who they are. Just be patient with them. Be kind to them, you know. What about your self-image? The truth is that you've no right to compare yourself negatively to others because once you become a Christian, you are adopted into God's family. That means you are a son or daughter of the King of Kings. So in God's eyes, you are a prince or a princess, all right? He is passionate about you and he loves you. So that's the image you need to have. You don't have to worry about what other people think. Do they like me? Am I beautiful enough? Am I handsome enough? Because he gives you the big like. All right? You don't need hundreds of other small likes. His like is the like that counts. So that's what good looks like. So how do we achieve that? Because in Paul's teachings, uh, in his letters, there's quite a lot about roots. When he speaks to the Ephesian church in his letter, he says, I want you to... Put your trust in Jesus. As you put your trust in Jesus, your roots will go down deep into God's love and they will strengthen you. So this is about giving over your life, surrendering your life to him, all of your life, not just parts of it. And as you do that, he says your roots will go down into God's love. And it's like bringing up that goodness from the soil, bringing up that strength from God and making you strong in the faith. And then when he spoke to the Galatian church, following on from that passage about human nature, he goes on to say, if you have your roots deep in Jesus, then your spiritual nature that we've got will develop in you these characteristics. And, and he lists them. And they're wonderful things, aren't they? Love and joy. You want your joy in your life. Peace and patience. You know, who wants to be more patient? No. I do. <laughs> things about... The way you treat other people, your goodness and kindness and faithfulness and humility. And also, it gives you self-control. This is the bit that helps you say no to the bad side of your human nature. When it says, go and punch him. <laughs> go and slag him off. No. Just turn over to the adult channel. No. Go and eat that slab of chocolate cake even though you're on a diet. No. That's your self-control. We call this the fruit of the spirit, but actually Paul doesn't. And I would suggest, that actually, we could call this the blossom of the Spirit. Now, if you take a tree, like a fruit tree, it comes out a beautiful blossom. And you need the blossom to produce the fruit. Now, I come from a cider apple growing area in Somerset. And 
If you have a storm when the blossom's out and it destroys the blossom, you're not going to get very good fruit. You need good blossom to be good fruit. And if we have that blossom of the Spirit, kindness, gentleness, love, joy, patience with other people, etc., then we're going to be kind and loving to them. It'll come out in our works. See, the blossom's there, and it'll come out in our works. If we're miserable and mean and selfish, mm-hmm. then that good works is not going to come out of that, is it? So it's the good works um, comes out of the blossom. And then Paul goes on to Colossians, and he says to the Colossian church this time, persist, if you keep your roots in Jesus, and you build your life on him, then you will be strengthened in your faith. This is saying it's not just a one-off thing. You need to keep persisting. Keep building your life. It's an ongoing thing on Jesus. And that would include bringing your roots out of the darkness into the light. And keep doing that. Because where we root our lives <laughs> determines our fruits. That's right. And it's a journey that we're on, isn't it? And Jesus has said to each one of us, I will be with you on that journey. I will be with you every day. Uh, and I will never leave you or forsake you. You know, we walk in God's love with Jesus alongside us, with the Holy Spirit, that spiritual nature, helping us to overcome the dark side of our human nature. And bringing us more into the light, bringing more and more roots across to be more and more like him. So it's not just the Trinity that we walk with, though. When we're placed on this planet, with our spiritual nature, born into his family, we have other Christians, and there's millions of others who will call themselves Christians who would call you their brother or sister. Wherever you go in the world, they will take you in, and they will pray for you, and they will love you, and they will encourage you. It's important that we have Christians alongside us that will encourage us. I mean, yes, there's going to be some people we meet that are miserable and a bit down, but we want to be alongside Christians that encourage us, don't we? If you take my apple tree that I bought. The whole reason of buying the crab apple tree, not was because I wanted a crab apple tree, but I wanted to pollinate the apple tree. I wanted it to produce more fruit. And I'm very lucky because I've got friends like my friend Jason and Richie that encouraged me. I was fortunate enough to be able to pray for Jason when he was in a bad place, a bad tree with bad fruit, uh, to accept Jesus. And he's put his roots down and he's grown more and more like Jesus. And he encourages me. He helps me when I'm down, I help him when he's down. And we help each other produce more fruit. We pollinate each other. And I think that's part of our fruit, actually, is to encourage others to produce their fruit. So we've got this parable that Jesus said. A good tree produces good fruit. And this is good spiritual fruit that has eternal value. Mm-hmm. It's not just doing any good works. It's, it's good work out of the spirit. The bad tree only produces bad fruit because it's not got the spiritual nature to help it produce the spiritual fruit. If we stay in the darkness, if we stay with just our human nature, and we don't move across into the light, don't accept Jesus, then we will come to a sad and sticky end but if we accept Jesus into our lives we are transplanted into the light and we can grow like him we can trust in him we'll build our lives on him we can move our roots out of darkness into the light and week by week month by month year by year as we persist we become more like Jesus we become a strong tree and produce strong fruit that is not false news (laughs) that is good news that is the gospel truth Where we root our lives determines our fruits. So root your lives in Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen.